Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union. We're in York at a National Joint Council meeting joined by General Secretary Matt Rack. Now Matt, as I said, we're at the NJC where the FBU and employers sit down to sort out all sorts of issues. But this is the June NJC and this is when pay normally gets resolved. Now obviously the background to this is we had a proposal from the employers. We put it out to ballot with the members and it was overwhelmingly rejected. Events the day unfolded, tell us what happened. Yes, Tam, so the NJC, as you say, we meet our employers uh, three times a year. The June NJC is the last opportunity for the employers to make a proposal on pay. Our pay is due to increase on the 1st of July. Uh, we balloted our members, 97% of our members rejected the employer's so-called proposal, which wasn't a pay offer. Uh, for a whole host of reasons that it simply wasn't uh, good enough uh, and we had hoped that the employers uh, would come here today with a revised proposal or something to start to address the issue of pay. The truth is that they haven't done that today. Uh, it's been a very long day, it's been quite a fraught uh, discussion with the employers but the current position is that uh, at the present time there is no proposal from the employers to address the issue of pay. Uh, they have asked us as a result of that to uh, meet again to try and address what the concerns the union had with their previous proposal, to try and discuss what can be done in relation to the Westminster government, uh, in particular about funding, uh, and that's what they've asked us to do. The, the truth, this, this is what we said to the employers, that our concerns about their proposal were on a number of, uh, a number of fronts. It wasn't a pay offer, it was a hypothetical pay proposal. Uh, it was unfunded. The, uh, it included what we called the non-exhaustive lists and we said that this union w will never be signing up to anything on that basis and they needed to understand that. That the, some of the work in, contained within the lists was completely unacceptable to some of our members. That the, even if you take the, uh, the broad and enrol argument that there are technical documents that have been worked on alongside that, that those would have to be part of the agreement. We wouldn't allow them to be simply guidance which to be frank, some chief officers might pick up and some might uh, choose not to pick up. Uh, and then, of course, the question of the, the pay figures themselves, that they weren't good enough. So five principal regions, reasons, but a whole number of others behind that. And what we said to the employers today is, look, stop messing us around. You've had a clear message from our members that this is not acceptable. We told you before we even balloted it wasn't going to be acceptable. You need to come up with something different, substantially different, T as we said it, tinkering with your last proposal is not going to be good enough. And that was the message we gave to the employers today. Well, absolutely. Now, Matt, the ballot result has been known for a, quite a considerable period of time. The ball was firmly in the employer's court. I suppose the key question now is, on the back of all this, does this mean there is no pay rise for firefighters on the 1st of July when everyone is expecting one? I think that's uh, currently the position, yeah, Tam, and uh, that's the outrage that we express to the employers today. And when that starts to sink in around the country, that anger, I think, will be reflected across the Fire Brigade Union uh, that uh, there is no revised proposal. Uh, currently, that means actually we're one of the possibly the only group of public sector workers not to get a pay rise at the, uh, in 2019. Now, the employers are saying that's not where they're going to end up. Well, they need to move damn quick to start addressing that issue because currently there is no proposal to increase our members' pay from uh, July and we cannot sit back and allow that to, to happen. OK, Matt, so what is the next steps for the union then? Is it more discussions or are we talking about now entering into another phase of a pay campaign? Well, uh, we had our conference in Blackpool recently and the conference sets our policy and the conference sets out clear steps that we need to start making, um, both at the national union but also at local level. Uh, and that includes moving towards a campaign of, of uh, potentially industrial action. That means we need to start discussing with our members what's happened to their pay. We need to discuss what's happened to the fire service. We need to, we're discussing a, a great deal about the work that our members are doing, which in our opinion they're not really being paid for, work that's not within contract or not within the role map. Uh, all that has been mapped out through our regional structures, going down to the brigade committees, uh, and ultimately individual members and branches will be discussed with about 
this work we think is agreed, this work isn't agreed. Uh, so all that work is underway. Um, we, what we said to the employers, we'll never refuse to meet them. That, would, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. We will meet the employers to discuss pay, but they need to come back with something substantially different. If they do, then our members will decide uh, whether that might be acceptable. But currently, I'm not hugely optimistic about that. Currently, uh, we also, alongside that, have to now prepare for a serious battle. The truth is this, uh, Tam, that uh, we are, it looks like we are not going to get a pay rise unless we're prepared for, to fight for it. We're not going to get a pay rise unless we're out campaigning, and that means campaigning with fire service employers, chief fire officers, uh, central government, uh, other governments around the UK. We need to put pressure on them. And actually, ultimately, further down the line, if we don't uh, shift them on using those arguments, then we're going to have to consider industrial action. And that's the decision of our conference, and that's what we're now going to have to seriously start mapping out what does that mean in the next couple of, uh, next couple of months. OK, Matt, well, you mentioned governments across the UK. What's the situation in Scotland? Because I know there's been a lot of discussion about extra money that that government mm -hmm. may be putting forward. Yeah, the situation is slightly different in Scotland. In the Scottish Government has said that it would be willing to put money into the, the Fire and Rescue Service, uh, and they asked us for some discussions. We've had those discussions, and there is now a proposal from the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, I will, we will cover that in, in further communications with members, uh, particularly in Scotland, but I think it's, it's of interest to everyone across the UK. Uh, the Executive Council is still in the process of discussing that. We're meeting the Scottish Scottish uh, Regional Committee on, on Thursday of this week uh, and that will become clearer over the next uh, couple of days. Okay Matt, well just back to the campaign that you discussed there, how would you see members getting involved in that and what's your message to FBU members at what clearly is going to be, to put it mildly, a very disappointing time on stations and control rooms up across the UK? I think that uh, firefighters are being treated in a disgraceful manner by uh, fire service employers by chief fire officers, by politicians who are quick to pat us on the back when, uh, you know, in the aftermath of Grenfell or the fire we saw the other day in Barking or other major incidents around the country or the major floodings or the wild uh, land fires that we saw uh, over the past year, you know, firefighters do that job day in and day out. We're praised by politicians, but they're not willing to put the money in to invest in our service and not willing to put the money in to give our members a pay rise that they deserve. The only way we're going to do it is relying on our own strength, our own organisation, standing together, giving that message back to them. Actually, yeah, it's a fantastic public service. It deserves the investments and the resources that we, we need and firefighters need a pay rise. Uh, so we need to take that message politically, but also, I think people need to seriously start sitting down on our branches and discussing what do we do? Why are we doing work that we're not paid for? Why are we volunteering to do things that we're not paid for? Uh, why are we taking on additional work that we're not paid for? Why, are the, why is our chief officer forcing these changes through at local level? You want to do that, you negotiate it nationally. If you want to do that, negotiate it with a pay rise. That's what we need. Matt, thanks. A very strong message there from the Union's General Secretary and clearly we're entered into a very serious time with across the FBU. So please stay up to date and you can do that through our website, that's www.fbu.org.uk or why not sign up to our electronic bulletin called Roll Call. To do that, go to the website, the front page, scroll down and you can enter your email address. Till next time, thanks for joining us and Matt, thanks very much. Thanks, Tom.